This is a clip taken from The Black and the Bro, part three. What? Is that actually what the, what the show's called? The Black and the Bro? God damn it, man. Anyway, whatever, right? Um, this is a podcast where a former co-host of The Fire and the Kid called Malik B, a guy that was unceremoniously fired from the show, even though Brendan tried to make it seem as if he just wanted to go his own way and pursue his own things. But essentially, he was fired for standing up to Brendan, maybe not laughing at his jokes so often, poking fun at him, and generally just being a bit of a nuisance. And then Brendan had enough and thought, you know what, Gadoosh, get the hell out of here, B. Get the hell out of here, B. But then Malik went on to being a little bit of a our word when it comes to online stuff he ended up doing that weird thing where he said to people if you want to find out the tea of what happened you have to sub to my youtube channel get me up to fifty thousand or something then i'll tell you that ended up failing then the guy who's doing the podcast with who's also a friend of brendan who's also a part of that redacted crew um he ended up falling out with malik the show they're doing together they end up not doing it anymore that guy chose brendan over malik which was super horrendous super cringe and really lame on his part malik ended up being on his own people end up attacking him saying that he might be the issue bloody blah 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 but in the end he never ended up spilling the t beans or spilling the tea in terms of what actually happened behind the scenes and why brendan ended up firing him now it feels like a lot of Bobby Lee drama going on. He's now got some backbone and got some courage, which I still think is lame because, like I said previously, it, has, it took three women coming out and saying something um, derogatory about those guys for suddenly all the men in the comedy community to get a backbone and to get some sort of courage and come out and say something about Brendan, uh, Brian Callan, the Fire and the Kid, and just in general, how they go on and how they act in the LA comedy scene. It took three women to come out and say something before they said something because they didn't want to upset Daddy Rogan. Lame, 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 lame. But regardless, we are where we are at the moment. I guess it's a good thing that they came out and said something anyway, right? It's a good thing to say something. So... I don't have the clip. I don't have the clip clipped up, but we're gonna scan through the YouTube video and see where Malik speaks about it because he was very animated and irate about the whole thing. If you want to check out the video yourself, you can. It's called "The Black and the Bro Part 3, Episode Eighty Two. Johnny Johnny Mitchell, Malik B, Sick Joke Podcast. Yo, why do you invite me, bro? Because you're the number one most requested guest, and I, for the life of me, cannot figure out why. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, gang? What's up, man? Can we get a, a little brr. 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 That's how I eat pussy. I get right next to One thing, just to point out one thing. If there's one thing I hate that white people do when they're around black people, is number one, ask you about your hair. Number two, when they try and make gunshot brat brat sounds. Am I Jamaican? Am I Jamaican? Is my dad Beanie Man? Have you heard me talk about bashment music? Do you hear me play reggae music? Have you ever heard me make those brat brat sounds with my own mouth anyway? Why are you doing this? Why? So if you're a white person and you've got black friends, please do not ask them about their hair. And please do not make brap brap sounds. It's annoying. You might end up meeting a black person who doesn't even listen to Flipping Bashment, who likes classical music, who likes rock, who likes indie, who likes listening to jazz. Why are you doing brap brap sounds? No braps, please. Next to my girl's vagina and go. <laughs> <laughs> the what? The clip clip. Come on, let's get to the point. Go down on your chick, and she's giving you all these. Where is it? Does I'm, do you know the time type about this? I don't know. Rude. You, you tall and skinny. But you have the same body type. Yeah. Ass ain't been fucking relevant since. Spike Come on, let's get to the point. Where where are they talking about it? Where? Yo, cause then they so shy. So then if you like put a pillow on your head, right. make sure you you can't see disappear, right. and then watch. They put the pillow over their own head. Okay, yeah. shut up. Oh, bro, and then she's like, God, baby, I'm gonna why put do a pillow you over your head if you guys don't get to the fucking point. We're gonna let you go. We're gonna keep fucking. You ever seen that movie Crash? Oh my God, it's still going about this, okay? Fuck, uh, Fuqua, Fuqua, he directed yeah. it, but no, 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 what's the movie? Come on. Ops will facilitate, they call it gladiator fights, dude. I know, yeah. Okay, it's still going. I never really watched the Ozarks. I couldn't, I mean. No, it wasn't a good show.
only do like black rooms and they're like, I grew up in the trailer. Well, oh, shut up, man. Jesus Christ, these guys are talking about their ass. Bro, I'm Alec B, bro. <laughs> Malik B, hey, bro. go in, King. He can never. He can go never. In, King. He talking about like, yo, they can survive the hood, man. What the fuck? Okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's, 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 there we go. I think that's where it starts. Here, around here. Yo, big up. Here's another thing, bro. Here's another thing. Okay, okay. Let's go. Let's go. There we go. That now, shit they were saying on the comments. Okay, here we go. Here we go. On He's getting own, animated. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not like some of these hack white boys that only do like black rooms and they're like, I grew up in the trailer park. That was like, that's like, uh, Call you know. them out then. Who the fuck are you talking about? Nah, they're nice guys. Oh. That's all I got. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I've been calling enough people out this yeah, last yeah, couple man. of weeks, Who's dude. Been calling out? I don't know. You know, you know, big, a big stupid guy with a oh, Brendan shot. <laughs> I've been hearing about that Bobby Levy. Hey, I want to let y'all know, nigga. Hey, all oh, the yeah, you know Brendan Schaub. Time out. Time out. Podcast. I was on his podcast. All that. Uh, listen, all that shit they were saying on the comments, like, oh, Malik B, you just come with drama and all that shit. Wow. Hey, oh, Look. Malik B, you need to get around some people because all, all you, you the problem. Yeah. If all your friends left you, right. you can't, you can't be in a problem. You sucked on the podcast. Yep. Think about this, though. You haven't heard shit from my name. Everybody loved me in these L.A. streets. But every time I look at a boy, he always into some shit. Yep. Like, come on, bro. To be fair, I don't think it was a lot of people saying that. And if it was, it was probably loads of Mark Harley BGL's burner accounts that are saying he was a problem. Most people didn't. Most people knew. Most people knew that he was definitely a sacrificial lamb. And because him and um, Chappelle were uh, basically mocking Brendan to his face and laughing too much. And, you know, Brendan doesn't really. Brendan's not a comedian that way. He doesn't like when people. He doesn't like to be in the butt of the jokes. Even sometimes when Brian Callen gets at him, <clears throat> he gets super defensive. He doesn't like it. It's not something that he comes natural to him because, you know, he's a big strapping gentleman who's always relied on his physicality to basically navigate through life. He's never had to rely on jokes. So he's never been, he's never grown up in an area like I did, in a community like I did, where, you know, you just got ripped apart. It doesn't matter how big and strong you are. It doesn't matter how big and strong you were. You just got ripped to pieces with words and you had to come back with words. If you tried to fight somebody, you automatically lost. Do you know what I mean? Even if you won the fight, no one cared. You lost, basically. So he never had that. So um, no one really saw Malik, I don't think, as a bad influence on the show or whatever it may be. I, I just think that was some maybe some Brendan Schub sycophants and whatever. But most people just thought it was lame the way he acted after the fact. The fact that he tried to string it along, use it as promo for his podcast, talk about the whole 50K thing. He went out real sad. That's his own thing. It's his own, it's his own fault. As somebody mentioned in the comments, Malik fell on his own sword, basically. It wasn't nothing to do with the fans, I don't think so. It's mostly his own... F Again, his own fear also that Brendan was going to somehow damage his career. Because I supposedly... The, the other conversation was that I heard... So supposedly, the other conversation I heard was that... I think on the Friday Kids subreddit, supposedly that, that he didn't sign an NDA or something. That's why he got kicked off the show. He wouldn't sign an NDA. Um, and obviously, he could have said what he wanted about Brendan, but he didn't of fear of his career being affected, or maybe because he didn't want the drama, I don't know, but either way, he came across like he was scared, and now suddenly, he's got all the courage in the world, and he's talking about, you know, come to the hood, so like, it's a bit lame, brother, it's a bit lame. Like, Same. now y'all looking stupid now, then when all y'all DMing me, talking about like, oh, Malik, you vindicated because of Bobby Lee beef, I've been telling you about them bitches over there, they all weak motherfuckers. But, but you can tell how much of a good guy Brendan is, that he elicits this level of anger in somebody, this isn't even his drama, and look how furious he is, he is absolutely shaking, he's really, really, really angry, that's how you can tell that Brendan's a good guy, isn't it? like, because he makes people angry, <laughs> I stood up to him. I was like, bro, I'm not, I, I turned down money to like stand and have my integrity. What kind of weak ass nigga do I look like taking like, just like bending on my knees and get fucked in the ass like some of them guys over there. And I can name them. I don't Chappelle Lacey, probably. Chappelle Lacey basically picking Brendan over him was brutal. But the one that was brutal the worst was definitely the other guy he did the podcast with. Um, what was it called? Missing Weight, Touching Weight, whatever that was, something weight. Um, they were doing a podcast together that was pretty decent. They had pretty good chemistry. They were being funny with each other. They were well, being funny with each other. It was a pretty humorous show. And then, of course, you know, I guess because of what happened to the fallout, he didn't want any passer. So he basically, you know, decided to go with Brendan and, you know, basically told Malik to kick rocks. But, um, but the other, but, but, but the Chappelle thing made sense. Chappelle was already on T5K. He was getting started his career. He didn't want to, you know, have it. it well, again, it wasn't his beef. Brendan had beef with Malik for whatever reason. Well, when did the beef with Malik start from what we saw on the outside as fans? Did it start as, um, 
What does it do with the conversation about Malik being uh, decent at basketball? Was that the reason? I remember Brendan wasn't didn't believe that he played basketball at a certain college or something. Was it that to do with that? Maybe it was a basketball thing, or maybe it was no, or maybe it was because it was, was it Malik knew something about a Mayweather fight or or Mayweather promotion fight or something. There was a big fight, and he knew who was fighting, and he corrected Brendan, and Brendan got offended or something. Sun, yeah, there was Sun, yeah, PBC boxing, yeah, that's the one, yeah, that's the one, yeah. Something happened about boxing, and then from there it went, it crumbled to pieces. It was fucking hilarious. Give a fuck, and also, too, too, quite frankly, and make this the. I don't give a fuck, bro. What they gonna do to me, weak ass niggas? And now here's another, here's another, here's another big thing. Up, big up. Here's another. Oh, thing, I want that guy to get run over by a truck so bad. Stop doing that, man. Just because you like Kendrick Lamar and you're flipping, like listen to the bashment music and your last girlfriend was mixed race, doesn't mean you do this stuff. Relax, bro. Relax. Relax. So annoying. There's nothing more annoying than this, honestly. Or like one of the white guys that comes up to you randomly in a bar and starts talking to you about Wu-Tang Clan or Jay Dilla or something. Like, leave me alone, bro. I'm trying to enjoy this drink and trying to bag this, this shorty over here. And you're over here kind of giving me lectures about flipping Talib Kweli. Like, go away. God damn. There's another thing. Gossip. It was like, why don't you just come out and tell the truth? I'm like, that shit with Bobby Lee. I'll leak, I'll leak this whole motherfucking text thread. And then why didn't you leak it then, bro? Why didn't you leak it? All this talk, bro. All these comedians are always tough on their own show. But when it came to being tough in front of them, didn't say a damn thing. They had to wait for Esther, Kalila, and Annie to say something. Then suddenly they all start getting the confidence to make jokes and stuff. Get out of here. You're all weak. You're all weak. Brendan's got you all by the balls, mate. It's mad actually that Brendan and Brian, Brendan and Brian have that come out much pull and influence on the scene that people were scared to mention their names or to even mention they they checked out the flipping fire and the kids subreddit. Maybe of course it had to do more to do with Joe Rogan, but still, it must show the influence those guys must have on the scene on the ground level in everyday life that people are like, nah, I can't do it, I can't do it. Madness. Now, they ain't gonna do shit to me. What's the truth? And the truth is. Brendan but, but, Schaub fucked Bobby Lee. Uh, Brendan bro, Schaub that's none of my business. Bobby Lee. Uh, that's none of my business. I'm talking about I'm talking about all these people that's like DMing me. Like, nah, you wanted to DM. Why you just didn't leak it? Why you just didn't leak it? Because gossip is only good for the moment. That's no longevity. Longevity, no, creati creativity is longevity. No one was asking you to gossip. This guy's being an absolute R word. No one was asking you to gossip. You clearly got done dirty on the fight and the kid. I legitimately think... Him and Chappelle were actually some of the best co-hosts that Brendan had in that kind of period, right? Because the other guy, what was his name? The white dude. Brendan didn't let him fucking finish a sentence. Um, really nice guy he came across, but Brendan wouldn't let him finish a sentence. Um, the other guy, Josh Wolf, as Brendan calls him. Josh Wolf, actually, but Josh Wolf, as Brendan calls him. Um, they kind of ran out of steam because Josh is basically like a sensible adult kind of type guy. And Brendan tries to pretend like he's a teenager. Yeah, Josh has basically got an 18 year old son and stuff and you know he treats comedy like a flipping job and he loves the actual craft of it and it's just a different way of looking at life I felt like so I didn't really match I thought Chappelle and flipping um, Malik were pretty decent as co-hosts you know they, they brought up some interesting topics they had good banter they didn't mind laughing at themselves but what people wanted you to do was to speak about how dirty Brendan was because at the time he was still under the guise that he was a good guy. He was still trying to paint this idea that he was a beast of a dad, beast of a good guy, when clearly he wasn't because he beat you off the show because what? Because you corrected him on a flipping fight card because you dared to say you had a decent basketball career. Whatever the nonsense reason was, it wasn't enough to kick you off the show, especially the way that he did it, right? Didn't even give you a send-off, just made it seem as if like you just left because you wanted to leave. Yeah, of course, duh. It says Will was the best. Will, of course, Will Sasso was the best co-host. You know what I mean, though. Will Sasso, like that episode of Will Sasso and Chris Celia will go down in fucking podcast history. That goes. That's a Hall of Famer podcast. Will Sasso, Chris Celia, and Brian Kellen Hall of Fame. And again, you know why it's so, it's so amazing? Because Brian Kellen doesn't even play that much of a starring role in it. He just sets them up. He's actually Brian Kellen's actually amazing when he's in a room with people who are funnier than him because he actually doesn't mind playing second fiddle and just setting them up with bits. I mean, throwing at premises, asking, you know, open-ended questions, ba, 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 and kind of just playing the, um, uh, what you call it, kind of playing second fiddle to everybody in the room. He does it better than anybody. Whereas Brendan gets kind of, he feels awkward. He's like, 
yeah, man, that's really funny, huh? You know what I mean? He comes in with something redacted. Instead of just taking time, sitting back and letting the talent breathe, letting them express themselves, and then maybe chiming in with a few bits here and there. That's what Brian did really well in that show. But anyway, let's continue. But yeah, that's what I said. Man, she just come out and just said, hey, what he did was some fuck shit. I did nothing wrong to the guy. I was just trying to help. Bloody blah, blah, blah. Blah, but he was too scared. Just be honest and say at the time you were worried about your career. It's fine. But don't now try and turn up like bad boy, bad boy thing because you weren't on a bad boy vibe at that time. Even though, most likely, even though Malik, you know, is, I don't know, 100 pounds lighter than flipping Brendan, you could probably give him a good scene to. I've seen Malik's boxing. He's pretty good at boxing. So I reckon he could probably give uh, Brendan a, a, a hard time. Unless, you know, Brendan decides to give him a double leg and it'll be over. I knew they was weirdos uh, when they said... Uh, well, their career they, is dying, though. They're, see, they're, hold they're on, thing, hold on, let me just get off. Mm. And another thing is, this is how I knew shit was corny. Because they was like, yo, they had a dude named Michael Turner, and they said white, white Mike would be the white boy that's in the hood. No, the fuck he won't, nigga. I'm just L.A. You take him to the hood, we'll probably... F What's he talking about, man? Who's Michael Turner? What's the hood? Who's the hood and who's Michael Turner? Can someone explain this to me? Who is Michael Turner? <laughs> Bro, why do you pronounce the words so wrong? <laughs> man say the name Maya. Uh, Maya as Maya. Bruh, leave me alone, man. Let me pronounce the words I want to pronounce them. English is my third language. I just learned it yesterday, man. D don't you know? I just learned this shit yesterday. Allow me, allow me. I don't know who this guy is and who Eric something is, but anyway, let's continue. Boy, <laughs> what would we do, though? Bro, sorry. not me. I like Mike. Bro. Right, bro. Mike's right. a buddy. Who's Mike Turner? Yeah, Who's all that? All of niggas is weak. Bro. What we do? Run train, bro. I'm Malik B, bro. <laughs> Malik B. Hey, bro. go in, King. He can never. He can go never. Go in, King. You talking about like yo? They can survive the hood, man. What the fuck? I will bring them where they at. I'm, I'm good everywhere I go. That's why I film street. I know. I know a thing about L.A. streets. What's he talking about, bro? This is again. This is what he always does. What's he talking about? What does this have to do with Brendan Schub and Bobby Lee? L.A. streets, Compton, Pyru, Crip, on blood. What, what is this? Who cares? Talk about the people. God almighty. LA Street says when you talk and you run your mouth and you gossip like they do, right? You get done up or you get beat the shit out of. But they're not in that lifestyle. So this is comedy. That's why I was like, okay, this is not for me. Mm. I wasn't raised like that. Mm. I was like, man, I don't fit in. That's cool. I don't right. fit in with that right. shit. So I, I'm not about to say and speak on business, but this is just for these motherfuckers. So he said... You said you could leak it. Now you're saying you don't want to leak it because you don't speak on business. Make your mind up, brother. Make your mind up. You keep DMing me and talking about like, oh, Mark Harley, he Malik, Malik felt entitled. Who the, f who the fuck are you speaking on another man's business? Y'all some bitches, bro. Tell him. Yeah. BGL got dunked on. But to be fair to BGL again, like I said, BGL, as lame and as much of a loser and as much as a redacted as he is, he is Brendan's boy. So in the same token that people go after him, if he's got someone in his corner who's willing to flip in, you know, suck on his schlong and do his bidding for him online, fair play. It's a bit annoying, it's a bit cringe, but fair play. Yeah, don't see us out here in these LA streets. Don't come to La Cienega and Sunset. Meet me in the pink dot. My brothers will slap the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that guy. I hate the, uh, we, I, I hate the white the white guy is fucking annoying. I hate him so much. Is this what is this what LA does to you? Is this what LA does to you? Like you're always kind of performing. Like you don't need to perform. Let your friend just say what he wants to say. Maybe make a little joke to cut the tension at the end. But just let him say it because he's clearly a little bit wound up about this thing because of whatever DMs he's been getting. Let him breathe a bit and then maybe make a joke at the end. Why are you performing? Like no one's gonna cast you in a movie role because of what you said in the podcast. Like just simmer down, my friend. Simmer down. We ain't saying, uh, hey, we not saying nothing on wax though. I'm not. I'm just saying. No, we're acting quite literally on wax. This is gonna be not, broadcast. We not. I'm not saying. I'm not trying to <laughs> promote think, violence. This is a private conversation. I'm not trying to promote, promote violence. He's armed. He has a gun on him right now. I'm not trying to do and, none uh, of that he's shit. He's gonna go wave it around recklessly uh, to get back for to make up for that buffalo shooting. You know, he's gonna go kill some white people. Hey, RIP to all them people, man. Damn. Now yeah, we, RIP, had a, we had a. We had a. Yeah, that white guy is lame. Anyway, the whole thing is lame. They didn't say nothing, in, you know, nothing really, in, not, nothing really insightful. If anything, for anyone that was doubting whether or not there was bad blood between Brendan and Malik, now we know there's definitely bad blood. He definitely hates the guy. He doesn't leave a good impression on people. He also hates everyone associated with the show. He hates BGL, evident. BGL probably doesn't like him, evident. It is what it is. Um, and the white guy on the show that's hosting it is an absolute R-word. Lame hell. 
the brap sounds he was making, the, the jokes he was making, just lame as hell. Imagine watching a show with him doing stand-up. Just imagine what that must be like. God almighty. I was fucking this girl and she was like, ah! When you're with your black friends, they're like, ah! Shut up, man. Get off the fucking stage with your shit. Anyway, let's, let's continue. <laughs> what, what are you guys saying in the chat? Ben is with Shaw's response to Malik. I don't have a problem with Malik. I love that guy. He's one of my best friends ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, Ryu. Ryu, Ken, you know that straight away. Definitely he's going to say. I, I have no problems with the guy. He's my... B, B. I, I love him. I don't, I don't know what he's talking about. He's, he's, he's got my number, B. He can tell me. Shut up. Uh, but yeah, anyway, yeah. Bryce said, LX, toxic for sure. Today, 50 Cent was shot nine times. Hi, beginning of the day, we're talking about Gary Owen. Yeah, of course they're talking about Gary Owen. Imagine being pussy enough not to say Gary Owen's name. Imagine how pussy you have to be to not say Gary Owen's name. Imagine. He's a nice guy. That's all he's got. At least Gary Owen is funnier than you. I already, look, Gary Owen isn't even my type of comedy. But I can, I can confidently say I would laugh way more watching Gary Owen do stand-up comedy than this absolute, this absolute Bean, this guy here, this bean. I would have way more time having way more fun watching Gary Owen and this absolute bean, this weapon, this wallad. Look at him. God almighty, man. Brap, brap, brap. Like, shut up, man. What next? How do you make your hair like that? Wow, black people are really good at dancing, innit? Uh -huh. right, shut up, you idiot. 